Good morning, Texas Stuntman Association. Yeah, this is Jeff McGaffrey with JAG Films. I'm calling for Gary. Just a moment, please. Hello, Jeff. How are things going today? Oh, going great. How about yourself? Just good. What's up? Well, we're ready to go into production next month for that fire gag. We're going to need a stunt double and two stuntmen. So I'll send Ken Farmer our lead over this week for you to work out all the details with him. No problem. I'll give you a call back later. We'll see you. Well, that finishes my work day as an actor. We're filming here at the back lot of Las Colinas Studios just outside Dallas. Now, normally I do most of my own stunt work. You are great, Ken. Thank you, darling. But for the sake of this picture <laughs> and my own safety, veteran stuntman Gary Paul is going to double for me in the last sequence. <laughs> Thank goodness. <sighs> so we thought we'd give you a little inside view of that movie magic and show you just exactly how we go about making these exciting action sequences. Thank you. For instance, the two bad guys that were chasing me a few moments ago were in reality stuntmen. The three of us rehearsed that fight scene until we had it down like a dance step. One, two, three. With what it costs today to make a motion picture, a studio cannot afford any type of injury to an actor that would halt production. So, stunt people are used as action characters or doubles. Originally, way back in the old silent movie days, stuntmen were extras who were paid a few dollars to fall off a horse or uh, participate in a full contact fight. And they were full contact fights, too. This is an early fire gag. Not very dangerous, not much to it. Take the old blanket. Special effects weren't much either. Those were real chairs and real windows. Hard to break out. But the roping effect was fantastic. Through the window. What a shot. Ouch. Watch the grass burrs. Ooh. That's got a smart. Through the bushes, no less. John Wayne was one of the many big stars who got his start in westerns. What a draw, Duke. Ouch. Modern stuntmen today are highly skilled in varied areas. They use specialized equipment such as uh, body pads and uh, flak jackets or pneumatic air rams that catapult a body 40 feet into the air or yank them vertically at superhuman speed. They also use airbags to enable them to make 300-foot falls with ease. Now, you notice that I said they. You're not going to catch me stepping off a 30-story building. And you shouldn't either. It takes years of training to become a professional stuntman. Today, Gary is going to use a Panatex fire suit for this stunt, or gag as it's called. Let's step over to the trailer, see how all of this works. Hey! Anybody alive in there? Yeah. Be out in just a second. I'm glad it's you in that suit and not me. Well, somebody's got I know, it's a dirty job. Yeah, 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 <laughs> Hey, make me look good, bud. I try, I try. Break a leg. Now, the camera crew and technical staff take every precaution to ensure the success of the stunt on the first take. Second chances are rare and costly and dangerous, I might add. Special effects people mix napalm in buckets. 
Then a water-based gel called Zell Gel is kept at near freezing temperatures, then applied to Gary's underclothing and skin. This lowers his body temperature and gives him an added measure of protection from the 900 degree centigrade, that's 1400 degree Fahrenheit, heat of the fire. After the stunt is performed, the gel tends to block the skin pores, but is removable with stubborn scrubbing and maybe a little layer of hide too. The napalm is applied to the car at the last minute before shooting. Sometimes applied by hand, sometimes by paint rollers. When lit, the chemical gives off a very bright orange flame and a lot of heavy smoke. It creates a real dramatic effect for the scene. Gary continues applying the cold, messy gel even to his hair, simultaneously directing the continuing operations to the car. Most stuntmen use talcum powder against the intense heat. But with this method, the gel method, sweating, which would turn to steam and cause severe skin burns, is virtually eliminated. A constant flow compressed air bottle is built into the suit to enable Gary to breathe throughout this fire gag. Since the flames give off poisonous gases and burn all the oxygen, this air bottle is absolutely necessary, preventing permanent damage to the lungs. Now, Gary has approximately three minutes of air supply. Next, Gary puts on a Bella Cava. This is a cap that is soaked overnight in the near freezing Zell gel. At this point, the compressed air piece is positioned in Gary's mouth. The silver suit that Gary wears is made of Penatex. This is a fireproof material that is manufactured in England. This suit is the only one of its kind in the United States, being a new lightweight fireproof material. Now a special effects combustible is applied to Gary's outer clothing to give off an even amount of flame. His face is then totally covered with the Bella Cava, giving added protection and minimal exposure to fumes. The final protective garment is a special Panatex hood, which is sealed from the rear for additional protection. Now by this time, Gary is completely dependent on using hand signals for communication with the crew, being unable to hear, see, or talk to himself. Dave ignites the napalm on the car, while Mark waits until the very last second to turn on the air supply because of its limits. Gary must even receive a special signal to know when he has been set on fire. In this blind and deafened state with only the smell of the protective and combustible chemicals all around, Gary has described this moment as feeling something like a human bomb about to explode. Gary is totally consumed in a ball of fire, and the cautious crew is quick to rush in with fire extinguishers when the gag is completed. Gary's air supply is limited to three minutes, so he must be assisted in removing the bulky headpieces. He's okay, and the crew is obviously pleased with the success of the stunt. 